Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining this week's Single Cell and Spatial Exploration Club. My name is Julie. I'll be filling in for Alexis as speaker for this week. Um, so last week, we explored Alzheimer's disease, and this week, we want to continue on that trend of exploring another neurodegenerative disease, Parkinson's, right? And so I'm excited to give this talk today because in this analysis, we used our new version of Talk to Data. And so throughout this talk, I'll be giving a demonstration on how to use the new user interface, some of the new uh, features, as well as try to bring in spatial data into the conversation as well. All right, so let's get started. So Parkinson's disease, as we know, is a neurodegenerative disorder affecting millions worldwide. Um, it is a complex condition with a significant impact on patients' uh, lives. So despite ongoing research, early diagnosis and effective treatment still remains elusive. So in this presentation, uh, we'll be delving into a promising avenue where we identified a potential marker gene, HSPB1, in order to help us aid and understand uh, Parkinson's disease. Okay, and to recap from last week, we found these two genes, FCER1G and TYROBP, as among the most differentially expressed genes in Alzheimer's, All right? And so based on these findings, we can now explore the potential for discovering similar markers in other neurodegenerative diseases, such as Parkinson's, right? And then to give a little bit of a background on Parkinson's disease. So Parkinson's is characterized by neuronal loss in the substantia nigra, which is this black area right here in a healthy control brain. And this area is responsible for motor movement. And so when we're experiencing a neuronal loss in the substantia nigra, um, it could lead to a whole host of symptoms such as rigidity, tremor, slow movement, loss of balance. Um, Parkinson's disease is also characterized by these sticky Lewy bodies um, that aggregate in the brain. So we see in later stages of Parkinson's how these Lewy bodies aggregate, especially in the substantia nigra, but also in other parts of the brain as well. Okay, and we're when we're talking about neurodegenerative diseases, a lot of them are hard to distinguish from Oh, excuse me, a lot of them are hard to distinguish from each other uh, due to their similar pathology. So when we look at this Venn diagram, we can see that Parkinson's and dementia with Lewy bodies are quite similar to each other. However, dementia with Lewy bodies um, presents with Lewy bodies in the neocortex uh, with a presentation of dementia, whereas Parkinson's presents with Lewy bodies in the substantia nigra um, and there is no presentation of dementia. So despite their similar characteristics, these two conditions are still quite distinct from each other. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish in this um, analysis is how can we distinguish these two conditions? Right, and so one way we can do that is by exploring the differentially expressed genes between Parkinson's, dementia with Lewy bodies, and controls. And the data set that we use come from this uh, study where they took samples from the human midbrain and dorsal striatum tissues. And then they examined the conditions that were interested in Parkinson's, dementia with Lewy bodies and normal controls. And then they also did the single cell uh, analysis as well. Okay, and then when we do the differential expression analysis, we found that this particular gene, HSPB1, is among the most differentially expressed genes between all of the conditions. So when we're looking at this heat map, you can see that the spot for Parkinson's is quite red. So this means that the expression for HSPB1 is highest in Parkinson's compared to Lewy body dementia and compared to control. So the expression pattern goes highest expression of HSPB1 in Parkinson's, then Lewy body dementia, then normal. Okay, and then our next question might be, well, where is HSPB1 located and which cell type? And then we can examine that since we have, uh, since this is single cell analysis, we can do a uh, composition analysis on a data set. And we see that HSPB1 is most highly expressed in pericytes. Now, pericytes line the, uh, line the blood vessels of the brain, 
Um, and so they're responsible for, you know, regulating blood flow, for supporting neuronal function, right? Um, and so this possibly suggests a link between HSPB1 and the vascular component of Parkinson's disease. Okay. And then next we'd be interested in, well, which regions of the brain can we find high expression of HSPB1? And so this is where we can pull in spatial data into our conversation. Okay, and so unfortunately, when I queried for Parkinson's disease in both of our single cell spatial transcriptomics database and our bulk spatial transcriptomics database, I wasn't able to find an appropriate data set where I can show the expression of HSPB1 in a diseased brain. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit and we're going to examine a normal mouse brain instead because I still wanna show you guys how we can examine spatial data. So switching over to talk to data. So this is on BioTuring Lens right now. We're looking at the brain um, colored by the clusters. And over on the left here, I have queried our gene HSPB1. If we click search, we can see that the highest expression is in this area. And if we switch back to coloring by the clustering, you can see that it's within cluster seven, right? And then so unfortunately, the authors did not provide annotation for what this cluster might be correlated to, which region in the brain it might be. So we took the brain atlas uh, to map these regions. And we see that this pink cluster looks quite similar to this purple cluster right here, which is the hypothalamus in the mouse. And this result isn't quite what we expect because we expect maybe substantia nigra. But Again, um, we are reminded that this is a mouse brain and not a human brain, and this is also in a um, normal brain and not a diseased brain. So, of course, more research needs to be done. Uh, we need to do more literature search, and yeah, um, this is just to show how you know we can try to incorporate spatial data into our analysis. Okay, but nonetheless. Our analysis doesn't stop here. We can still bring in, you know, more data sets to try to find which brain regions have high expression of HSPB1 in Parkinson's disease. And this is where I can demonstrate how we use the new talk to data. So once you're on the home screen of talk to data on the top banner, you can click go now and it'll take you to the new version. And then immediately you can see how the user interface um, is quite different from the old one. Okay. Once it loads, you'll be able to see an image of a tree. Okay. So here's the tree map. And then on the left, you have all of your categories, which you can sort by. So for us, we're going to switch to the Mondo disease ontology tree. And then we are going to query for our disease, Parkinson's. Click on that. And you can see how the branches are highlighted. If you click into a node, it'll expand that node into smaller ones. And if we keep clicking, we will get to Parkinson's. So if you hover over this, you can see that we have a total of about 785,000 cells over 23 studies um, that are labeled with Parkinson's disease, okay? And so the question that we're asking is that, okay, which brain region um, is expressing HSPB1? So we wanna switch to the anatomy tree, and then we wanna query for our uh, gene HSPB1, click search. And then this brings up the heat map component of our tree. So you can get an overview um, of what the expression is like for this gene. Now we're interested in the high expression of HSBB1. So I'm going to change the scale from absolute to relative. 
And then you can also play with this slider right here to change the threshold of the average rank. Okay, and then from a glance, you can see that expression of HSPB1 is mostly found in the brain, some in the blood, um, but this is interesting right here. We also find highest expression of HSPB1 in the substantia nigra pars compacta. So if you remember, the substantia nigra is the key region of the brain that plays a role in pathology in Parkinson's disease, right? So this is very interesting finding. Okay, and with that, we also want to examine the expression pattern of HSPB1 in other studies, right? Because we want to see if we can validate this, um, this expression pattern in other studies, and it's not just found in this one study. Okay, so if we go back to talk to data, we can add the substantia nigra to the query. We're gonna also add the brain as well. And then if we switch back to the disease tree, we can add our two other conditions, dementia with Lewy body and normal. Right, and to get a more compact view, we're gonna to switch to heat map as well. And then for easier viewing, we'll switch the two levels of these trees. So first we'll sort by anatomy and then by disease. Okay, and then immediately you can see that in the brain, the expression for HSPB1 is quite similar between Parkinson's disease and Lewy body dementia. However, if you hover over the node, it'll tell you the rank. So the rank for HSPB1 in Parkinson's is about 1125 whereas the rank in Lewy body dementia is about 1100. So HSPB1 is slightly higher in Parkinson's than it is in Lewy body dementia, but we can definitely see that uh, pattern more pronounced in the substantia nigra pars compacta right here. Right, and this is great. These, these uh, findings are promising. Um, so this leads us to our next question, we're gonna change gears a little bit here. So when we're talking about finding potential markers to differentiate uh, certain conditions, we also wanna think about it from the clinical perspective, right? Um, and so blood-based biomarkers are definitely a less invasive way of diagnosing and monitoring neurodegenerative diseases. So we wanna see uh, if we can see the same expression pattern of HSPB1 in blood. So going back to talk to data again. And finally, we'll query for a genome, which is PP1. Okay. And then remember to click search as well so you can bring up the heat map component. All right. And we can click heat map here. All right, perfect. So we see that, yes, we do see some HSPB1 expression in blood, um, interestingly enough, in Parkinson's disease, but we don't see any expression in Lewy body dementia. Um, but this is purely due to the fact that there are no uh, blood cells um, that researchers have researched in Lewy body dementia, so they're not currently present in the data set right now. Um, nonetheless, these findings are pretty interesting. Oh, so this image looks different from the heat map that we just saw. This is because if you go back to the tree, you can also switch the scale. So we were at the absolute expression scale, you can switch it to relative. So once you switch it to relative, right, it'll show you this result. Okay, and so that concludes our analysis. Uh, to give you guys a summary, HSPB1 is highly expressed in pericytes and the substantia nigra pars compacta, which is a key region affected in Parkinson's disease. HSPB1 is also, interestingly enough, detected in blood, suggesting its potential as a non-invasive marker. And so this gene shows a distinct expression pattern across Parkinson's, dementia with Lewy bodies, and normal controls. 
making it a promising tool for differentiating these conditions. Okay, and so that concludes our webinar for this week. We greatly appreciate if you took time to answer the poll. Um, it greatly helps us improve our talks and figure out what case studies we wanna do next. Um, and for those of you who answered the poll last week, we hear you, we appreciate your suggestions and we're working on actively incorporating those suggestions in our future talks as well. Okay, so I can go ahead and delve into the Q&A section now. Let me open the chat box. Okay, so one person asks, besides PD and DLD, besides Parkinson's and dementia with Lewy bodies, do you see HSPB1 expression in other brain diseases? Um, so when I queried for HSPB1, I did see it in other uh, neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's and demyelinating disease, I believe. However, if we compare those expressions, um, if we compare the expression of HSPB1 across those neurodegenerative diseases, it's still the highest in um, Parkinson's, interestingly. And then is the new talk to data, will the new talk to data, talk to data go with the new database? Um, so yes, my colleague has prepared some slides on this. Okay, so in the new database, it will include about 150 million cells and about 250 data sets. Um, and this includes human data, right? And so we're actively trying to curate more data sets to add into the database and consistently expand. We're also trying to standardize the ontology as well between Smart Folk, Rebrowser X, and Bowtering Lens and Talk to Data and whatnot. Okay, and does the new talk to data only support human? So yes, so the new version only supports human at this point, um, but the old version still will have human, mouse, and non-human primate as well. Okay. You guys are also free to schedule a training with us as well. My colleague is putting in the chat. So feel free to try out the new Talk to Data right now if you have any questions. Uh, this webinar will be open for about another nine minutes for you to answer any questions you guys have. Okay, so if there's no other questions, uh, we can end the, uh, the webinar right now. Uh, so thank you guys for tuning in this week. Um, please stay tuned for next week.